A long line in Irvine tonight where voters are eager to make sure their vote counts. And Desmond Shaw is live in SkyCal tonight flowing, flying overhead. Good evening, Des. Good evening, Pat and Susie. Here we are at the Student Center at UC Irvine, where the line has been as long as four hours to try to vote today. As I widen out, I'll show you here. It has obviously gotten a lot shorter. Here is the end of the line, and here you see the poll worker making sure that no one else attempts to line up behind them. So this is all the last uh, people here that will be able to vote tonight. Part of the issue, there was not enough uh, equipment or staff earlier today. The Orange County Registrar addressed all that. Another thing that's been tying up this line is a lot of first-time voters. It's taken a lot of time to register them all. And so at one point, a four-hour back up these patient folks though they are almost done with their ordeal to exercise their vote tonight live at sky caliberhead i'm desmond shaw pat and Susie, back to you in the studio all right desmond thank you so much well the polls here oh let's go to now the race for president here in california of course a very safe state for democrats in past years registered democrats outnumber registered republicans two to one and right now kamala harris no surprise here 55 percent of the vote and she would rack up the 54 electoral college votes if that is the case if it turns out like that now look at the u.s senate uh, not really surprised here so far a full six-year term for adam schiff a former federal prosecutor and member of the house for 20 years and steve garvey an infielder for the dodgers and the padres for almost 20 years making his first run into politics and right now the democrat adam schiff as you see there with just over 50 percent of the vote compared to 47 and a half for Steve Garvey. And if you would look at those results so far, Susie, Garvey is doing much sure. better than expected. The polls, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, the polls here in California have just closed as the race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump comes to a close. And there's no surprise again. CBS News is projecting that Vice President Harris will win California. We have live updates from both campaigns beginning with KCAL's Natalie Brand in Washington, D.C. Well, Natalie, you're there with the vice president. What's the mood like there at the Harris campaign? Pat, Susie, I have to tell you, over the past hour or so, the crowd has kind of become a bit more subdued. They're eagerly watching uh, election coverage and analysis, waiting for more election results to trickle in. Uh, supporters that we've talked to tell us that they're remaining cautiously optimistic, but knew coming into tonight how close this race would be. And the Harris campaign heading into tonight said no one recognizes that more than the vice president herself. We're still waiting to learn when she's going to come here to Howard University, her alma mater, to address the crowd of supporters here. Uh, many of them students who were invited to be here uh, as part of uh, tonight. What we know from exit polling so far uh, is that Harris supporters and voters, their top issues were democracy followed by uh, abortion. We also know uh, that the gender gap that we're seeing tonight in the early returns resembles that of 2020, with men going for former President Trump and women going for Vice President Harris in about the same margins uh, as 2020. The Harris campaign also keeping a close eye on younger voters, college voters, and expressing that they feel very confident about the turnout that they've seen in in key battlegrounds, including Pennsylvania. And as we know, Pat and Susie, it will come down uh, to the seven battlegrounds that ultimately are going to decide this race. Uh, those states, obviously, uh, too close to call at this hour. Right. Natalie Brand, live from Washington, D.C. tonight. Thank you so much, Natalie. A Prop 32 to raise the minimum wage to $18 an hour right now, looking like... No, 55% and 46% right now. And remember, these are very early, early, early returns, and we should, we should be seeing a lot more returns coming in here as we move throughout the night. Yeah, these are uh, primarily vote-by-mail ballots. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move on to Prop 33. This proposition will, would allow cities to expand rent control, and uh, opponents, of course, are saying this would lead to developers 
taking rental properties off the market and fewer affordable housing being built. So as it stands now, by like two to one right now, uh, this vote is in the no column. But there you see we have a very, very small percentage, minuscule, of uh, ballots in right now. And we do continue to track the big electoral map as the race for the White House is likely to be very close. That's right. KCAL News political reporter Tom Waite watching those key races tonight. Tom? And good evening to you, Susie and Pat. Yeah, the votes are coming in. It's late on the East Coast, but the map right now does favor former President Donald Trump. Let's take a look at our electoral map as it stands right now. You see all that red on the map? That is the, the states that are expected to go for President Trump. Now, these are states that were expected to go for former President Trump. And the blue states that you see on the wall, the those are all states that were expected to go to uh, Vice President Harris. So no surprises on the map right now. We're watching very closely the, these states, North Carolina, Georgia, and then Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Donald Trump has leads in all of these places. They are tight leads, but leads nonetheless. So for Kamala Harris to win the presidency, she needs to close the gap in those states really quickly. This is our electoral college uh, uh, scoreboard right here. 270 is the magic number. The first person to reach that becomes the president of the United States. All right, Tom, thank you. Uh, former President Trump has jumped out to an early lead in the Electoral College, but it's all going to come down to those swing states. That's right, and KCAL's Bradley Blackburn joins us live now with the Trump campaign in West Palm Beach, Florida. Bradley, I was going to ask any sense of how the Trump campaign is feeling right now, but I can imagine they're feeling pretty good so far. Definitely optimistic, Susie and Pat. You know, the supporters here at Trump headquarters have been cheering as every one of these states has been called. Really, as the night has gone on, we're seeing more of a party atmosphere here as people uh, celebrate the momentum that former President Trump is seeing. Of course, it does come down to those battlegrounds that you're discussing. And uh, with Georgia now leaning towards former President Trump, that's a critical moment. And we know that Trump himself is laser focused on Pennsylvania tonight. Uh, it is still a toss up at this point in time of course, and he's been calling into radio stations, urging his supporters to stay in line if they're still waiting to cast their ballots. Uh, he's done the same thing in California, by the way, urging his supporters in California who may still be in line to stay there to cast their votes, um, even though the state has been called now for Kamala Harris. So we know he's fighting for the popular vote as well tonight. Uh, but the Electoral College will decide who wins the White House. And former President Trump has now put the Harris campaign in a position of meeting to maintain that blue wall. Uh, we know that he is watching the election results tonight uh, from, not from headquarters here, but instead from his Mar-a-Lago estate. That's a few miles away. He's surrounded there by his inner circle of supporters, and that includes Elon Musk, uh, the billionaire who's been so influential in, uh, in Pennsylvania, in particular, trying to register voters there and support President Trump. And so this is, uh, he's with them, and we expect that at some point Point tonight, former President Trump will come here uh, to ag address the crowd, Susan and Pat, and you know that all of these supporters here are eagerly awaiting that moment. Oh, the question about that. All right. Thanks so much, Bradley. Well, tonight, voters will determine the fate of uh, 10 propositions in our state, including what direction to take on taxes, health care, and crime. Well, KCAL's Gio Insignares and news contributor Jessica Lemson join us now with what could be the most contentious measures on the ballot. That's certainly right, Susie Peck. Good evening to you both. And that would be Prop 36. That would increase penalties for retail theft and fentanyl. This is one, Jessica, where the context for this one goes back 10 years to Prop 47. So that it's, it's leading into uh, the results they're early, but gives us a lot to look to look at. So I think this actually goes back even further mm. decades ago to the three strikes law that we passed in California. This was a tough on crime measure and Prop 47 in a lot of ways was a swing of the pendulum the other way of mm -hmm. saying we should actually be more reform minded when it comes to criminal justice. A lot of people see Prop 36 as now moving back to the center saying we had that three strikes law super tough on crime. We had Prop Prop 47, people think maybe that went too far, right. and now coming back to Prop 36. And with that coming back to the results so far as they continue to pour in through the evening, again, a reminder that it is incredibly early as we pull these up for you, where less than 10% of the vote coming in so far, 3% in fact, but look at that. It's sort, certainly, Jessica, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but it seems that this is lining up with sort of where we expected voters overwhelmingly supporting Prop 36, at least so far. I think that we're going to see California voters 
kind of undermine mm. what our view of the blue California being very progressive, very liberal. I think we're going to see in a number of these different propositions, we just talked about the minimum wage, that we actually mm -hmm. vote a more moderate conservative way. And it certainly reflects what we've also been seeing on the ground as well in reporting, whether it's uh, specific types of crimes. You tend to talk to people who live in these neighborhoods, and the first thing they say is either citing drugs or homelessness, and that they want their politicians and it is to do something about it. And again, so far in these early results, you are seeing those numbers overwhelmed going to one side versus the other. That's right, and I expect something like mm. this will hold. I don't know that it's going to be 72, right. but the polling indicated it would be about 2 to 1, and I think that's what we're going to see at the end of the night. And on top of that, it's worth pointing out additional context that before, in a survey done by the Public Policy Institute of California, it found 73% of likely voters, likely voters said they would support Prop 36. So, so far early in the night, it is on tap there. So, we will, of course, continue to keep an eye on this prop as well as the other nine props through uh, the out throughout the evening for you here on KCAL News. Jessica, thank you. We'll, of course, be here with you all night. Susie, I'll send it over to you now. All right. Thank you so much, Gio and Jessica. Let's get some more insight now into the pres <coughs> presidential election. As those returns are coming in, those battleground states, definitely what we're looking at tonight. First of all, Zeb, I want to talk to you just about what's happening. We've seen sort of this red mirage. Can we call it that right now at this point? I, I, well, you, no, the networks haven't <laughs> called it, so I'm certainly not going to call it. Uh, I think there's still, if you look at each state and look at the counties where the votes, are, there's still a lot of votes left to be counted. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be a little premature to call, but I think right now you'd rather be in uh, former President Trump's uh, position than in uh, Vice President Harris's position. Uh, Virginia is very close, uh, and she's behind in the three. Uh, you know, the three Rust Belt battleground states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. That doesn't mean she couldn't come back, but um, the odds are the odds. Well, Sarah, we know about Georgia right now not looking too great for right. Vice President Harris. And the blue wall that we always talk about, Michigan, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Yeah. That's not looking so great right now, is it? But... What does it mean? Yeah. What does it all mean? I mean, so for sure, she is trailing in those states. Mm -hmm. There's still plenty of votes to be counted. Pennsylvania in particular, they don't actually begin opening those ballots until after the polls close at 8 p.m. So a lot could potentially change, but most certainly she <laughs> is trailing there. Yes. I want to also point to Arizona yeah. and some of the results that are already coming in there because what we're seeing is some evidence of some split-ticket voting. Mm -hmm. um, we see the Senate, in the Senate race, Ruben Gallegos, the, the Democrat, there leading by a much larger margin than than uh Vice President mm -hmm. Harris has at the moment with Donald Trump. Similarly, in Arizona, they have a uh, proposition on their ballot to make a constitutional amendment around abortion. That is doing very well at around 63% mm. of, of those ballots that have been counted thus far. Uh, and yet again, we see that that, uh, that Vice President Harris yeah. does not have such a lead. Yeah, all yeah. right. Thank you so much, Sarah and Zev. We'll send it back to you, Pat. All right, thanks, Susie. Now, the polls in California have been closed for a half hour now and more numbers are starting to trickle in tonight. Stay with us all night long for in-depth Southern California election coverage. Right now, you're looking live at our data center where all the votes from all the most important races are coming into our newsroom and we'll have the local results as they come in. So keep it right here on KCAL News.